Life Stories Live. My sense of trust has grown over the years that it has become, if you would call it, tangible. So that my walk with God now is far more by faith than it was by sight. My Yes, I was saved back in 1989, but for, for a decade and more, I had applied myself to excel and strive for everything but God himself. And it was there in that forest where in an instant, God showed me that I was 180 degrees off course, that he turned me back to himself. And I realized that my whole life has been a series of um, gentle interventions on, by God to draw me to himself. And now, and nowadays when I, when I look ahead and consider where I am, I'm living in, in, in Perth now, we emigrated again. Um, I'm very, very happy here in, in Perth with, with my family, as I say, working for the same company. It's, it's here that, that I can share um, a message from Hebrews 12, verses 1 and 2, where God's word says, the author of Hebrews says, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside the weight and the sin that so easily entangles us. And let us run with endurance the race set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy set before him, he endured the cross and is now seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Jesus didn't, didn't look at the cross. He looked through and beyond the cross. He looked to his, his um, being reunited with the father. And he did that by faith. He walked on this earth as a man, and yes, he is God Almighty, but he, he, he suffered the penalty as a, as a man, and he, and, and forgive me, I'm not going into a, a theology right now. The point is he looked beyond the cross. He looked beyond what could be seen. He looked beyond his circumstances. He looked to the promise, and God says what the promise is. The promise is eternal life. It's forever. And it's, it's life. Everything around us, the bush, the birds, the stars that reflect his creation, his glory and his magnificence. He is the giver of life. He created everything. And our future is to be with him as the creator of life. And he calls us to that marriage. And so um, the joy I have today I'm still confronted with lots of challenges like everyone, and there's still a, every now and again, you know, a lurking sense of anxiety, but I, I place that before the cross, and I, and I look to my Lord um, with a deep sense of trust by faith, and um, I can honestly say I have, a, I have a joy in my heart today. So with that, I'd like to hand back to Alan. Wow. <clears throat> Thank you, Adrian, for being so honest and sharing such a, a wonderful testimony of how God has led you through your life. It's not always easy. And, you know, when you come to Jesus, he doesn't promise that it's going to be a bed of roses. There are challenges that you heard tonight from, from Adrian, but he will help you and he'll help you through those challenges. But the most important thing that Adrian said tonight is he wants us to have that eternal life with him. That's what his plan is that we can share eternity with him. But there has to become a beginning. It has to be a foundation. And Jesus Christ is that foundation. And you need to, first of all, put your trust in him as your Savior and your Lord. The Bible says we're all sinners. We've all come short of the glory of God. And Jesus came and died on that cross to pay the penalty for your sin and my sin. And what we have to do is repent. I mean, turn away from our old way of life, from the way we've let God down, with where we broke his laws, and invite Jesus to come into our heart to be our Savior. And if you ask him to come in, he will come in. He says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him. Tonight, I want to give you an opportunity to get that foundation where you can know Jesus personally as your savior and your lord 
So what I want you to do is pray a prayer with me sincerely now. And right now, follow me in this prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, I confess that I am a sinner because the Bible says we have all sinned. We've all come short of the glory of God. And that includes me. But I believe, Jesus, that you died on the cross in my place, taking the punishment for my sins, and you poured out your precious blood to wash my sins away. I repent of my sins. I turn away from them. I turn to you with all my heart. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Come into my life right now by your spirit and give to me the free gift of eternal life. I receive you now. Thank you for coming into my life. Now I believe in my heart. I confess with my mouth that Jesus is the Son of God, that Jesus Christ is Lord, and that God has raised him from the dead. And I thank you, Lord, for saving me, for making me a child of God. Help me, Lord, from this day on to follow you, to serve you, and to look forward to that day when I will be with you forever. Thank you, Lord. Amen. If you pray that prayer and you really meant that prayer, please contact us on our hotline, plus 44794355027. You can WhatsApp, you can, you can text, or you can phone. You can also go to our website, lifestoriesworldwide.com. There you will find, uh, uh, you can click on, how can I get to know God? You can get a Bible app, which will help you. But at this time, we're going to ask George now. I believe he has some questions for Adrian. Thanks, George. Thank you, Alan. Thank you, Adrian, of course, for a lovely story. Uh, quite an interesting story, actually. Um, you were a bit of a daredevil when you were younger, by the sound of it. Yeah, or, no, or were you just a bad driver? <laughs> well, my family thought I was a bad driver. I thought I was. I thought I was a pretty good driver. <laughs> you've you've had a lo lots of scrapes and uh, accidents. Yeah, many. And uh, looking back on these, I mean, were you just? I mean, we just devil a bit care and just you just go out and go for it. Were you not scared at all at any time? No, cert certainly wasn't scared. Um, I mean, I've just given you a, a small sampling of what we got up to. But no, we um, like uh, like a lot of guys that get into racing. I finally got into racing and raced a go kart, uh, a, a two stroke go karts for a for a team, and I competed on the four wheel drive uh, national arena. So I, I rolled a few more cars after that, <laughs> <laughs> but but legally. <laughs> <laughs> So it, um, I, I still enjoy four-wheel driving. Um, I spend a lot of time in the bush at the moment. We've got a wonderful, um, a, a vast amount of, of uh, outback here in Australia to go and tour around. And so I've got a big four-wheel drive that I, I go into the bush with regularly to spend time under the stars and also to in, in, enjoy um, the car itself off-road. Off so... Now, you said your first encounter with Christianity was um, very cold, hard pews, and with your, your mind drifting and dreaming. <laughs> Were you dreaming of a... Did you ever dream you'd be here today telling us your story? Not even, not even close. I think even recently I didn't dream of, of um, the privilege of a platform like this. So, no. Excellent. So, then you've had a, a very varied life, very good. You said you went in the army and you wanted to go to the... <laughs>
officer school for personal development. What did you think that would develop into for you? Well, I think at at the time it was it was just something I could focus on, uh, and it was maybe a bit, uh, more driven by ego that um, I could become an officer, okay. a platoon commander. Um, you know, when I was when I was at school, I, I excelled in athletics and. Um, I, I always strive to be at the front of the pack, and so that was that was sort of, I guess, automatic or by default what I would go after. But um, certainly the leadership side and the, the personal development side wasn't wasn't so much the focus for me. But obviously the Lord had had other other plans. Yes, you've had a few opportunities because you told us a story about the, when your your friend's mother took you aside and uh, promptly told you about the gospel, worried about her son, of course. <laughs> but, then, but then you said uh, when you were in the army, before you went to the border of Angola and Namibia, that you, they, were also, they also preached the gospel to you. Who preached yeah. the gospel to you at that particular time? I can't remember his name, but it was just an, uh, an evangelist that um, would have been invited to, to address our battalion. Okay. Obviously, it didn't affect you at that particular time, but uh, when you went into um, contact with the enemy, were you scared or not at all. that came about? No, not at all. No, and I don't, I don't say that to make out as though I'm particularly courageous or, or brave. It was just, you know, for a year, at least for nine months of that year, that's, that's all you do. You, 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 you train doing um, formation attacks over and over and over and over. And in fact, mm -hmm. even even when we were deployed on the Namibian and Golan border, before they actually put us on the front line, we, we did a number of mock drills again. You know, so I had I had shot out thousands and thousands of rounds by then. And so when you go into the attack, it's it's really just an, an automated process mm -hmm. because that that fear has been uh, uh, programmed out of you. The, pe the people that would be fearful and haven't adjusted to the right mindset would have would not have made it that far. Um, so, but I, I, as I say, I don't consider myself elite in any in any way. But um, the, the the program that we we go through produces a soldier that no, is not not scared. I I, I had not a fiber of fear in me at all. In that wow. Time. So the reflection I had behind the tree was not because I was hiding. I mean, I was just reloading and uh, uh, hiding somewhere not, so that I couldn't be shot at cleanly. Um, but it was it, in that moment that time just stood still for me. And, and it, the Lord used that moment later on in my, my life to reflect on. And, and the reflection was how thin the veil is between life and death and that there's an urgency to receiving Christ. This is not something you put off and put off and put off. It's while you're alive, while the opportunity is there, you need to see Jesus, mm -hmm. you know? Um, so I think that's what the Lord was, that was the, that what the Lord was stirring in me was wake up. Amen. You know? Well, he took, you through, he took you through that war and he said, you ruined your sister's car. And... Uh, <laughs> You were given a cup of tea. A cup of tea fixes everything, of course. But you said that then you became the, about the realization of life, and um, you, you're an officer and you became uh, a leader of men. But you, you also said you felt that there was a gap between you and God. How yeah. did that come about? Well, the, the 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 way I shared my testimony was to point out that I clearly had moments where the gospel was shared with me as i know it's shared with many people around and i clearly had moments where i knew that i had dodged a bullet so to speak in mm -hmm. those in those vehicle accidents and so when i when i was lying under the stars there in the bush you must remember this is days and weeks that you're in the bush um you're surrounded by perfection you, you're surrounded by god's glory in all of his creation and so that 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 tension and that gap, I I couldn't manually fix it. I couldn't power through it. I couldn't claim it. I couldn't buy it. I couldn't theologically think it out. It, 
it was something that I had to receive and freely. Amen. And so, yeah. And so, you know, uh, I was asking the right question and I'd heard the answer in the Gospels, but hadn't put two and two together yet until, until I asked another question. And he told me, just go and read the Gospel. And, and when I read it, that's when the Lord came and saved me. It's, it's quite clear that I was unable to save myself, not, not through trying to be a good guy, and I, I just couldn't save myself. Even wanting to be saved, I couldn't save myself. Now, you said that God saved you and you couldn't save yourself. For somebody who may be watching this tonight or maybe sometime later, what do you mean by God saved you? Saved you from what? Well, I guess he saved me from um, thinking if, if, if I can uh, work at being a good person, that I'd be right with God. And I had enough enough. Um, history in my life to see that it was impossible for me at the time. So my advice to anyone would be is cry out to Jesus, call out to him, and and don't seek a way to be right with him, because that's why he came, is to make us right with him. Mm-hmm. And so my, 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 my experience was uh, faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. So the word of God granted me hearing. The word of God gave me ears on my heart to hear. So yes, I can hear, but I wasn't hearing in my heart. And it was when I started reading God's word that I, I was given hearing that I could hear in my spirit. And all of a sudden I started hearing God's voice, so to speak. And the Lord, God himself revealed Jesus to me. So this is something that the Lord does. It's not something that I can, I can do. Excellent. So you said you got saved and you started, you got lost in books, you said. <laughs> yeah. So lost and lost of books. <laughs> so much so, okay. There's nothing wrong with reading. But no, um you no. said you but I, you said yourself that you go you were hundred and eighty percent degrees off course with yes. all these books. Uh, why did you feel that? Because because you were seeking God. Is it not a good thing to read books and study all this and or how did it affect your, your home life on the studying and Well Reading all those books, a lot of them are beneficial, and a lot of them are written by people that have been inspired by God Himself, by the Holy Spirit, to 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 um, help others dealing with, struggling with, or you know, to be motivated, whatever. So there's a lot of good there. Mm-hmm. But if I turn my eyes away from God Himself, if I if I replace reading the Bible with reading other people's views about the Bible, I'm making a grave, grave error. And it's, it's not for me to argue any, with anyone on this point because this is my story. My story is I've, I, I felt and experienced the harm, the, 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 the malnourished state I ended up in by reading everything else, seeking truth in everything else, discovering how bad things are truthfully in everything mm-hmm. else except seeking God himself. Hallelujah. And so... When I, when I turned back to reading and praying and, and seeking God and surrounding myself with other men whose sole objective in life is to, is to build on their relationship with God, man, the spiritual complexion came back to me uh, in, in, in abundance. Excellent. And all of this, of course, through these years, you met and married your wife. Tell us a little bit yes. about your wife and how, actually, how supportive she's been to you. I actually met her about within two months after being saved on the border. So I still see her as my my gift from from God and that he wouldn't let me meet her until he had straightened me out. <laughs> so, um, she was actually the girl next door. My, whilst I was in the military, my parents had moved to a new property and it was, you know, they moved in next to uh, my wife, Audrey. And so when I was home on one swing, um, I was actually tearing up their lawn with my MX bike.
Hi Stories Live. Um, which I'm sorry about. <laughs> she, she, she came to the front gate and, and waved to me. She doesn't know why, but that's what she did. And scared scared the heck out of me. And I raced back into my property. But my best friend, the same best friend that I mentioned just now, whose mother shared the gospel with me, um, he, he came to me and said, well, what are you what are you doing? You know, this pretty girl next door has just waved at you. And so I've, <laughs> I summoned the courage there and, and went and knocked on the door and fell in love with her instantly. And that same day, I told her my my experience meeting Jesus on, on the Limpopo River because I didn't I didn't want to explore a relationship with her unless I knew, you know, she knew the Lord. And uh, but she did she did at that time and yeah, in, in June of this year it will be 30 years. Um, she's my best friend. I love her with all my heart. And um, did you tell your parents you'd become a Christian, and how did they, did they react when you saw them? The very, the very first person I told was my father, and he thought he had lost a son. Ooh. He thought, <laughs> he thought his son <laughs> had become an extremist, in, you know, um, a religious nut or something like that. Uh, yeah, you know, when I when I told him that I was, I, I was born again. I knew mm-hmm. what it meant to be born again. Um, it was difficult for him. But uh, about 15 years later, I had the privilege of baptizing my mother and my father in our, in our, in our swimming, swimming pool. Because over time, my father said, saw that the change in me was a complete transformation. I, I, I was not the same, same person. <laughs> and do you still go out on the bikes? No, after that that um, accident where I wrecked my left leg, um, my family told me very clearly in no no uncertain terms that that's the end of motorbikes, and that was. You mean you? You mean your wife told you? Uh, no, my, my <laughs> wife. My wife was okay with me on bikes because my mom and dad and and uh, I conceded, and okay. uh, yeah, I'd left left bikes, but then proceeded to. Um, with go-karts and four-wheel drives. Now, you were doing fantastic. you become become a Christian. Your life completely changed. Your parents became Christians. You had a lovely wife. You were doing great in your job. And all of a sudden, these <laughs> panic attacks started happening. Have well, you any idea where they came from or how they started? Well, you know, what, I, what I've woven into my testimony is, is the solution, is the, mm. is the answer. And that was to turn my eyes away from the problem and to focus on the Lord. I've realized that in life, if you've got a, if you've got an, a, a sin that even as a Christian, a sin that you're really struggling with to, to, to focus more on the sin, to try and overcome it is, is a, is a foolish um, way of going about it. Um, the, but to turn your eyes to the Lord is where your healing comes from. And that's when the sin just, disappears you just focus on him so yes with the counselor we we explored my my youth and the situation at work and you know there were, there were there were a lot of possibilities as to what the foundation of my panic was certainly the degree to which i was breathless um had had something to do with my my youth and upbringing um and and, and how i dealt with situations and how how we were dealt with in situations, you know, mm-hmm. a, a corporal discipline in, in South Africa in the 70s and 80s was a was standard procedure. Very strict, yeah. mm-hmm. But um, I I didn't do well, and I only discovered that later on in life that um, that it certainly contributed to the harm I, I suffered. But there again, if 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 I undertook to go and examine and analyze everything in my past. To only find resolution in that, I again think it would be a dead end street. Mm-hmm. It's when I it's when I actually turn to just trust the Lord, so that I can operate in His new mercies every day. That's that's where the healing came from. It wasn't um, get, uh, getting people to apologize to me, or whilst mm-hmm. that did happen, it wasn't the foundation of my my uh, spiritual well being. wasn't because of those people saying sorry it's 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 because of jesus it's because of the comfort of the holy spirit it's because of me 
believing his word. So his word saved me in the bush and his word saved me again when I started, you know, um, getting back to trusting and believing the truth. And how did that impact your, your home life and your work life? Well, my, my work, work life has been fantastic. Uh, I still work for the same company now for, I think it's about 24 years. I'm in a similar role here in, in Australia. Um, I really enjoy what I do, but have have learned not to idolize and and be, and be dependent on um, my work. I'll be honest with you. I do feel at times that the the the, the weight or the the dependency I have on the good things we have around us, mm -hmm. and I'm reminded to to know where my my life comes from, and, and that's from a trusting, living relationship with with the Lord. And so that's what I focus on. Today, I'm I, I make sure that I'm involved in a in a council of men who seek God with all their hearts. And when I say I make sure, I thank God that He's placed me in a, a community of of men um, who I who I gather with regularly. Uh, each of which I know are seeking God in their personal lives. And when mm -hmm. we get together, it's not its not about what we can do and build and accomplish. It's about sharing our, our stories and our journey in building our relationship with God alone. And now that you've overcome that, and for anybody who might be watching tonight or later, is there any particular advice or, uh, you know, you could give them on how to deal with it? Or Well, for me, as I've said now multiple times, it, it was seeking God in his word and God, when, when, when we seek him, he's not far from us and he'll never leave us nor forsake us. And he only wants the best for us, but the best for us is not solutions to our issues. The best for us is, is that we have a relationship with the giver of life. Mm -hmm. So my, my encouragement would be seek God with all your heart prayerfully and seek him in his word. You know, if you read in Hebrews, Hebrews four, and you read how sharp and how instrumental and how um, transformational God's word is. Try it, and and you'll see God's God's word works. It is Jesus. It is God with us. Is in His word. Well, thank you so much for being very honest in uh, in your story there, Adrian. And there's one question I always ask the uh, guests on the broadcast here, and that is: You've made many decisions in your life. But for you, what was the best decision you ever made? Well, with, without doubt, it was receiving Jesus as my Lord and Saviour. Thank you so much uh, for that, Adrian. And with that, I will um, hand back to my brother, Alan. Thank you, George. And thank you, Adrian, for answering those questions. A very yeah. interesting evening listening to you tonight. I'm sure many, many people will be blessed and helped by what you shared tonight. And I think one thing you said clearly was trust. Trust is one of the main things. And I think Amen. of that hymn, trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. It's been wonderful listening to you tonight, Adrian. Thank you so much. Thank You're you welcome. all for joining us tonight. And can I remind you, if you listen to this program, you want any, you've got any questions, you need help, then please contact us on our hotline plus four four seven nine four three double five zero two eight seven. You can also go to our website, lifestoriesworldwide.com. There you find lots of help, like what? how can I get to know God? You can find the Bible app. You can also get, get hold of all the other stories that we've had in previous Mondays, and also the ones that go out at lunchtime every day, Life Stories at Lunch. And can I also invite you to join us again next week? Next week, 8 o'clock, it's Valentine's Day next Monday, and we have uh, Ben and jo Joanne Petras, who are going to be sharing their story next week. Ben is a lawyer, Joanne is a doctor, and they're going to be sharing their story of how they had a lot of worldly things which didn't satisfy but then they found something that did bring lasting joy and happiness. So please join us again next week at 8 o'clock. So thank you all for being with us. Thank you, Adrian, again. Thank you for getting up so early in the morning to be with us. Pray you'll have a good rest now. Thank you so much, George. Thank you, Howard. It's great to have you all. And great to see Dave Smathers with us tonight, too. God bless you all. 
May you have a great week. May God bless you. May you know his love. May you know his peace. May you know that joy that only he can give. Life Stories Live.